The first target for the capacitor bank today is this old Bell satellite receiver that I found in a mountain of scrap at work. It no longer works, so it's a perfect thing to fire up with the cat bank, because there's really nothing on its board that I wish to salvage. Here's a quick look at the top of the main board. I think the first thing I'll do, since the line cord is still attached, is I'll attempt to hook the uh, cat bank up to the line cord and send my 6400 volt discharge in that way. Let's get hooked up and give this a try. The hook up to the power cord can be seen at the extreme right, so that's how my 6400 volt discharge is going to enter this board for the first shot. Let's charge up and fire. Charging, charged, and fire. Well, something went off there. Let's try again. Charging, charged, and fire. I've started to do damage to this thing with those first two shots. Uh, the components that protect the input have, of course, been blown apart. Time to hook up uh, a different way and keep going. I've now set up differently. The uh, negative of the cap bank is now hooked up to the ground of the board. Uh, I'm going to now use uh, the tip of my chicken stick to make contact here and there on the board and deliver a few zaps. So let's start to uh, toasting this thing. Well, that's toasted that up a bit and left my ears ringing at the same time. I, of course, left the expired smart card in and it's now showing nice signs of discharges onto its gold contacts. It should be nicely fried as well. Here we can see that the input choke was completely blown apart. The ferrite is right out of there and gone as shrapnel. 
and the 200 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor, is what I think it used to be, completely burst apart. A lot of the other caps that I hit uh, burst too. That one uh, sent its guts up into the ceiling, and that one, well, it burst, but the guts stayed in. Yeah, the others burst too, to varying degrees. The CPU chip and various others did not fare fairly well. Didn't expect them to, of course. <laughs> anyway, the plastic is cratered and blown apart, and you can see where the chips used to be before they vaporized, leaving craters in the plastic. This, of course, happened to some of the smaller chips, too. So, all in all, a pretty good fry job on this uh, useless old board. Let's flip it over and see what, if anything, happened to the bottom of it. Not much happened to the bottom, save a little discoloration uh, in this area here, where the discharges obviously jumped across some traces on the bottom of the board. I'd say I've had my fun with this one, and it's time to haul out something else. As a last look, sitting on the burnt-out smart card is the core of that electrolytic capacitor that was shot straight up into the ceiling. I just found it as I was cleaning up. So here's a last look at it. In the same junk pile at work that I got the previous board from that I just blew up minutes ago, I also found uh, a dead uh, satellite PVR box. I did salvage the 320 gigabyte SATA hard drive and laid it aside, but I'm going to fire up the main board here with the cat bank. Let's have a little more capacitive discharge fun. Hearing protectors are in, let's zap the board. Oops, my cap bank uh, power supply just overloaded the breaker it's on. I'll go switch the hydro back on and pick up the video. Breaker's back on. Uh, if I charge and fire too quickly, it can pop the 15 amp breaker I'm using. But anyway, let's continue a little bit here. I think this one's pretty much cooked. We'll have a look at it in a minute and see if there's anything else we can blast today. The cat bank sure worked this one over quite well. Pretty much everything got burnt on this board and some of the bits and pieces are uh, 
piled behind here bits of ferrite, parts of surface mound electrolytics, generally everything fried here. There was some kind of uh, CPU, that's all that's left of it. It was blown up into the air and uh, flipped over. We can see where the chip used to be, but there's not much left of it anymore, which was the idea here. Again, the underside of the board shows some burning and discoloration and pop traces, just like the previous board. Here's a look at the toasted real estate, including all sorts of little pop chips. Motorola, no longer. I can certainly see right into that chip now. And there's a last look at it before it goes into the trash. This 4 microfarad 250 AC volt capacitor came out of a dead ceiling fan again from a scrap bin at work. I don't think this capacitor will work too well if I give it 6400 volts, so let's go right ahead and do just that. Okay, I've got this little 4 microfarad 250 AC volt ceiling fan capacitor hooked up to the cat bank. I'll use the firing switch as opposed to the chicken stick, so uh, without further ado, let's see what, if anything, will happen to this little capacitor. Charging, charged, and fire! Hmm, I don't see any uh, capacitor there anymore. It uh, seems to have completely vanished for some reason. Okay, well, I've looked around for a minute or two here, and, well, that capacitor really seemed to blow apart. All I can find of the remains is uh, the two leads and some bits of plastic still stuck to them. Uh, I don't see anything else embedded in my ceiling or on the workbench or the floor. Well, maybe I'll find it another day, but certainly not right now. That's all I have to show out of that capacitor. Since I've got the cap bank out today, why not hook up a five-turn can-crushing coil to the system and fit in an empty beer can? Let's see uh, what'll happen. Let's see if we can crinkle this can a little bit. Charging. Charged and fire. A little steam is issuing out of the top of the can, and it's obviously you uh, acquired a waistline. Well, we made this one a, a wee bit slimmer uh, anyway. This time, since it's my last shot, and I'm not worried uh, if there's a mess or anything, I've decided to fill the empty beer can with water. Let's give this a try and uh, see if uh, anything happens. Charging. Charged. And fire. Very little effect to a filled can.
Since it's just sitting there and taking it, let's give it another shot. Charging, charged, and fire. Since it's not making any mass or doing very much, let's give it a third shot. Charging, charged, and fire. Yes, it barely even wiggles. Of course, what you get out of a capacitor bank depends on your capacitors. I'm using uh, microwave oven capacitors for my bank, and of course, real pulse discharge capacitors would dump their current a heck of a lot more quickly and probably would have uh, blown this water-filled can in half instead of just slightly wiggling it. Here's the can removed from the coil. It's still full of water, and all my three shots did was slightly crinkle and wrinkle the aluminum all the way around. You can sort of see the crinkling and wrinkling around the middle of this can. Uh, I guess I'll grab my air rifle and shoot it with that or something. Have some more fun with it somehow. Here's that same beer can full of water that I could only wrinkle with the capacitor bank. I've got out my 22 caliber pellet rifle. I've loaded a uh, pellet in backwards, so it's going to be essentially a large cavity hollow point. Let's see uh, what, if anything, it'll do to this already wrinkled can. Here's the aftermath of that air rifle shot fired at point-blank range. Turning the pellet around made it mushroom like crazy in the already weakened, flimsy aluminum can. Thanks for watching, and as always, there'll be plenty more action to come.